Here's a project that I've been uh, considering doing for a while. Uh, I've had these pieces for almost a month now, and I think I finally got my last component, this thing right here. Now, um, some of you guys might be able to guess what this is. Uh, it's a captain's chair from Star Trek, you know, for, for my Migos figure. But uh, this part right here is what I was waiting on. Uh, this right here is going to uh, kind of like send my build over the top. Here are the materials that you're going to need for this build. Uh, I have some felt here that I got at Walmart. That's going to be used to, to cover the base of the piece. Um, you're also going to need a hot glue gun. The hot glue gun will be used for um, the electronics components just to kind of like fit them in there and set them. Uh, I used it to attach the battery pack and also the uh, circuit board. I also used it when I soldered the, uh, the connections here just to keep them isolated or insulated. You're also going to need some brushes. Now, you're going to need some brushes with some fine tips because, you know, you're going to have some small buttons that you're going to have to paint. So get yourself some, some good brushes. Also, you're going to need some epoxy because the epoxy is going to be used for the, um, the plastic parts of the pieces. This ring right here is going to be attached with the epoxy. Also, the upholstery piece will be attached with the epoxy. Uh, I found this, like, lid. I ha actually have a couple of them, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's like a standard size or what, but this is from a, a vitamin bottle that my wife had. This is from a prescription bottle. You just need something that's gonna fit in there, you know, and so that it allows the chair to rotate. So you're gonna to need to find something like that. Uh, the most important part though, however, is this right here, this, this Fusion Krylon All-in-One. Now, the color is matte vintage blue, and it matches the color of the chair from uh, the original series. Uh, it, it's spot on, so you're gonna have to find some of this or something very, very similar. And uh, I think that kind of rounds out our materials list. Well, here I am just kind of like priming the pieces. You know, this, this paint that I have is not only going to be the primer, but it's also going to be the main color of the piece. It's kind of like a, um, well, the color is called vintage blue, but it's like a blue gray that really matches the color of the chair as seen in a lot of pictures that I saw online. Right now I'm painting the, um, the armrests on my chair. I really should have done this when the black cushion part was not attached to the rest of the of a model, but it is what it is now. I was too excited to get it together, I think, and just kind of, you know, maybe put it together without thinking it through just to see what it would look like, you know. I, I understand, I was watching this video with uh, Vic Meganya, and uh, he was talking about the chair itself and how it was patterned after a 1960s executive chair. You know, um, I found a picture of it online, and they just kind of built up around it. It's basically this the black cushion part, and the um, the arms here, and uh, it's on some really like you know, futuristic legs, like some of those uh, tapered retro legs. It really gives it that uh, really a '60s vibe, you know. Okay, it looks like. I'm almost done with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish it with a little Agrax or shade when it dries. Let me make sure I get a good coat on it though. That yeah, doesn't look too bad. I think I'm okay now. When you guys build your model, don't make the mistakes I make. I guess that's another reason to watch this video, right? If you, if you bought one of these chairs, you, you know, you want to see how it's assembled. You want to have somebody else make the mistake before you do, right? I know I would. I also found, um, like, the helm. You know, on the bridge, they had the, the helm where Chekhov and Sulu would, you know, navigate the ship. I think I'm going to try that, too. These are kind of fun, you know? I don't know, it'd be nice to have the whole place set, but you know, if you do find it, it's probably in pretty bad shape. I saw this um, guy on YouTube and he had uh, made a trifold uh, kind of like play set and it looked pretty cool. So I don't know, maybe I can do something like that. I don't know, but so far so good. Looking great, huh? I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll put a little Agrax earth shade on it like I did on this side right here just to kind of, you know, bring down the color a bit. So, 
I'm gonna let that dry. I really wanted to tape these off using some blue painter's tape. Let's see how steady my hands are. You know, because <laughs> I just don't paint miniatures as well as I used to or models. What happens to us when we get old, huh? Everything just seems to fall apart, right? Let's see, actually it's not looking too bad. What do you think? I think it might be okay. Just thinking I have to go down to Lowe's and go get some uh, painter's tape. But I think I might be okay. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot this little comm unit thing, so I'm, uh, I'm painting right now. Let's see, I think I need another coat. Looks kind of um, splotchy. Not bad. It's kind of like a sky blue. I'm thinking I'll paint it gray. And then I'll go back with that. Uh, I have a little blue wash. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it gray. Doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, I think you're staying in gray. Uh-oh. Looks like I got a little on the side. Let me see if I can pull it off before it dries. And these water-based paints are pretty forgiving. You know, if you get to them quick enough. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, I must say. I'm gonna let that stuff dry and then I'm gonna tackle the, um, the buttons. I'm painting the buttons now. I may cut away, it's, you know, it's, just, it's kind of boring, I guess. It's tedious. And there's a lot of little buttons here. I'm just trying to do my best on these buttons. Uh, I researched online and this side is yellow, red, green, and the other side is red, green, uh, yellow, green, red. So I guess there was no rhyme or reason. I'll try to keep it somewhat screen accurate, I guess. And my little green. Oh, I've already messed up. I went on the wrong side over here. That side's supposed to be the white buttons. Oh well. Again, that's why you're watching this, so you don't make these mistakes. I guess I can go back and paint those white, not a big deal. It's not really the green that they use, but you know, it's the green that I've got. I guess I should have some basic colors. I don't know. My paints are often drying up and when I open them, they're, they're not much uh, left, they're hard. Uh, let me go back and fix that and we'll be back. All right, these rockers are blue, yellow, red. And this one's blue. Let me get those first. Yeah, definitely look these up online so you can find out the colors, you know. I mean, who cares really, but 
You may. Right? Blue, yellow, red. So here we go. Yellow. Looking actually <laughs> pretty good, I, I guess, you know. Okay, I think I can live with that. Let me get the red on there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to seal it because I can see these little buttons getting chipped. I think I'm gonna add some electronics to this and some bridge sounds. You know, I bought a, uh, a kit, like a sound kit, and it just came in. That's what uh, I've been waiting on as far as this model goes. Let me check out those rockers and uh, I'll be right back. I'm pulling out all my paints. <laughs> I have these in the back. I hope they're still good. Oh no. Looks like that orange is done. Let me see if I can find another orange. Yeah, luckily I remember my composite colors, right? Makes a little yellow and a little red. Hopefully I can get an orange. I don't need that much. Just need one little key, one little rocker, right? Let's see. I think I have orange. Success. Okay, so orange, yellow, gray, I think is the order. If not, who cares? It's going to be that way on my chair. If you guys do any of this, I'd like to see it, you know? Because I'm sure I'm not the only guy out there, you know, getting these little models and doing junk with Amigo, you know? I don't know, I've seen some pretty cool collections out there. Some of you guys do other toys besides Mego. I mean, I'm not, I'm not collecting anything besides Mego, you know, toys because that's what I grew up with, you know. But I'd love to see what you guys got. There's a couple of viewers that I have that show off some really good stuff. There's a guy named Lewis that um, does these rehauls. Let's see what was next. White, I think. I think it's white and yellow from this point on. So, yeah, I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Yeah, I'll just keep alternating. And I think I'm gonna be done. 
last key over here, this rocker switch. Yeah, okay, let me put some yellows on there. And I think I'm gonna call it. And then I'm gonna start working on the uh, electronics. I mean, I might as well like bottom and hmm, not too shabby, right? Oh, I forgot that Agrax Earth shade on that um, other side. Let me grab it real quick. You know, I love this stuff. I put it on everything. So I'm just going to. You know, Bring down the color of the brown. You can see those print lines, right? It kind of makes them more pronounced. All right, so let's see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll get the base on there. And uh, we'll go from there. And I took my painted base, right? And I put a piece of felt on it. Because, you know, there was all these, like, rough lines on there. And <laughs> I don't know if you can see, I am not the best um, tracer when it comes to, you know, getting things right. However, the way I have this model set up, it's pretty forgiving, right? It doesn't even look, uh, well, you can barely see it in the back, but you have to be looking for it. You know? So... That's kind of like what it's going to be like, right, without the electronics. But I, I want to put some sounds in there, so what I did was I, I drilled a hole through the model, and I put a little notch here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my speaker in there. I'm going to have to rewire it. But that speaker just <laughs> seems to fit in there seamlessly, right? And then on the bottom, I'm just going to run these wires through. And then I'm going to hook them up to my sound card, you know, let's see, and this will fit right on top. And if I have any speaker uh, problems, I can always just replace the speaker. I can just cut the wire and, you know, pop it out and get another little teeny speaker and pop it in there. So I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest. Let me show you what it looks like. You know, I got, um, here's the actual soundboard. Right? And you can program your sounds here with like a micro USB. Um, here's where I cut off the speakers. I'm going to go ahead and, and solder those on. And the switch. You know what? I was thinking. Oh no. Oh, my glue just popped off. Oh, I'm going to have to re -glue, re glue that. I don't know how because, well, let's see. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. See, I've already glued the chair down, so I might have to pop that through and pull it out with some pliers. I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyway, what I was talking about was maybe putting a little notch here and running the switch in the back. That way I can press it. I don't know. Does that look too bad? I don't know. I can always just keep it on the inside, right, and just flip the chair over and press it. I think I have the sounds going for about three minutes, but I... I'd rather not do that. I might just go with this option right here. But first of all, I gotta solve this problem right here. Wish me luck. Managed to pull this up out of the bottom of the chair. What I ended up doing is uh, breaking the, the top of the chair, uh, the seal with the glue that I had, and drilling a hole, and then just using a dowel to punch out the, uh, the lid as it was stuck in there. So it worked out. And as I was drilling the holes, I thought, well, why don't you just drill a bunch of holes and you can use this as kind of like a sound box, right? Because what I want to do is I want to, I want to use the, uh, the sound card to create sounds from the bridge and I might as well use this as kind of like just a little sound box. So I got that done. Um, I also installed the, uh, the sound card. Now I say installed, but basically what I did was I just hooked up the speakers, you know, soldered them there 
and also soldered the um, the connections to the battery box. And I just glued it in, in the uh, in the base right there. And you can see I, I ran the switch up and, and here it is right here. Let me see if I can turn it on. So there's the switch. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so, there's the chair. I, I, I left this, um, I put this here so I could show you why you need to put down a, a piece of felt like a, like a carpet because look how rough that is, right? And just, it's, if you sand it, I, I think it might just dig into the, to the print. So, you know, on the series they had carpeting there and I think the carpeting went down the front, but I, I didn't do that just because it was gonna be hard to get that, that clean fold. So I'll, I'll glue that down again, but um, basically, you know, there's my captain's chair. It looks pretty cool. It sounds pretty cool, right? And then just turn it off. Now I'm gonna put a link in the description below or you can get the, um, the sounds online and there's a variety of sounds. Now uh, I picked the, um, the first bridge uh, sounds, the activation ones. And that pretty much filled up the entire sound card. The sound card only has like an eight megabyte space to it. And it's really easy. You just plug it in. Uh, I showed you last time the, uh, the connector. I actually made a hole here. Let me see if I can show you that on camera. Uh, I made a hole here. Uh, you know, so if I want to reprogram it later, I can, you know. But, you know, it's just pot glue. You can pop, pop it off and you can just record it that way. <clears throat> but... Um, yeah, this, the sound works great, but it takes up most of the space on the card. So that's about the only thing. But very, very pleased with it. Well, I hope you guys try this. You know, these uh, chairs are, are online, you know, in, on eBay. And I don't really remember where I got this from. I don't know if... Maybe Books and Rand. I don't remember, honestly. I don't remember which one I got it from. But like I said, there's several of them on there. Uh, definitely, you will need to paint it just because, you know, it looks really rough. But once you get that paint on there, it, it really starts to look clean. Uh, I also, you know, painted the chair, of course, and, and the arms, give them those wood accents. But uh, all in all, very pleased with it. And I think it came out great. Well, my Captain Kirk really looks at home in that chair, doesn't he? This was really a fun build. Uh, the model was, was pretty easy to put together and it wasn't too bad to paint either. You know, uh, looking back in retrospect, I would probably put down some blue painter's tape on the side just to keep those lines nice and clean. But you know, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the sound card really did take it over the top. Uh, this is just, just a fun toy. This is a great, great thing for my collection. Uh, you know, I'm very, very happy with it. Well, I hope to see you all soon. I'll, I'll be putting out a, another video uh, probably next week. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a, a painted Tellarite head or something else. But until then, take care. Have fun with your Migos. See you soon.